Well, I have quite a few clients right now that are building homes, and most of them are taking a lot longer than what was projected originally. Well, I came across an article in the Wall Street Journal that was talking about supply chain issues and how they've had an effect on all the economy, and it was so relevant to the building industry, I thought I'd share my thoughts on that article and how it relates to new builds that are going on right now. So if that's of interest, stick around. I have all the details coming right up. Don't buy real estate if you experience allergic reactions to happiness, satisfaction, pride, fulfillment, contentment. Stop buying real estate if you don't like community, a sea of belonging, a diversified portfolio. Buying real estate may cause you to shop at hardware stores, furniture stores, and design centers. See your realtor immediately if you experience any of these symptoms. Hello, it's Mark Baymig, Michael Saunders and Company. And in this channel, Living in Lakewood Ranch, we cover all the areas around Lakewood Ranch from Bradenton to Sarasota and from Anna Maria Island down to Siesta Key. So if you get value from these videos, just click that little subscribe button, ding the little bell every time I put on a new video, you'll be notified. So I came across this article in the Wall Street Journal, and I just found it so telling and so uh, relevant for what is going on in today's market. And I have a quite a few new construction projects, projects going on right now with uh, different clients. And each one seems to have the same issue is that it is taking much, much longer than it was originally told to the buyers when they uh, signed up for their contracts is what's going on. So let me show you the article first, and then we'll dive into each one of these items individually. So as you can see here, the title is seven things you should know to understand the supply chain. And one of the first things that it comes up is that supply chains have more moving parts than what we would typically think. And I got to thinking, I can't imagine how many items, individual items it takes to get a house under construction. But one of the things that you have to understand from the builder's standpoint of view is that before they start anything, they have to have a permit. So in order to speed up that process, they go ahead and say, okay, this is the house we're going to put on that lot. These are the features that are going to be in that house. Are they including a pool or not? Because when that goes to the permit department, they don't make any changes after the original permit is pulled. So in order to speed up the process, They've gone ahead and pulled a permit on most of these homes so they can go ahead and at least get them started. And they have picked out the most um, current uh, designs that most people are choosing with some changes so that every house is not the same on the interior. So that's one of the ways that they've tried to um, speed up the process, so to speak, to get uh, houses started is to go ahead and pull permits by go ahead and picking out what house is going to go on what lot. So the second thing that they talk about in this article is that sudden spikes in demand can be easily misread. So can you imagine in March of 2020 when there was no demand for any houses and then all of a sudden in April and May of 2020, these uh, builders get slammed with orders and how many orders they can actually take. Um, so they were basically, they could have sold everything during those first couple of months of the pandemic if they chose to, but they didn't because they knew that they couldn't keep up and it wasn't um, logical to have orders on the books for prices they didn't know what was going to be in the future. So they had to taper that back some. So that was a huge spike in demand. So the third item that they talk about is because the demand is hard to predict, Many current companies turn to just-in-time production. So in other words, the factories have to be relatively close. So we do have a window manufacturer nearby, and we do have places that make uh, roof trusses and those kind of things, uh, concrete block, those kind of things. But if the item is not close, let's just say refrigerators are not made here and neither are the microwaves or any of those kind of things, then that becomes an issue because you can't just get it delivered uh, within a couple of days, especially when the uh, backlog of orders going to those types of suppliers has really increased uh, tenfold. So what happens, they all, they all start ordering more than what they need. They go ahead and say, well, we know we're going to build this many houses of this style, so we're going to go ahead and order all the windows. Well, all of a sudden, the window manufacturers are slammed with orders, and there's just no way that they can keep up. So number five talks about the longer the distribution chain, the more susceptible it is to disruption. So 
depending on how many layers are in the distribution chain where it goes from the, uh, let's just say that the refrigerators are made in Singapore or Taiwan or China or wherever, and then it has to get on a boat and then it has to come across the ocean and then it has to come into California and then it has to come in a truck and it comes all the way to here. So you can imagine, and I, I, you probably remember all those ships that were backed up in the ports over in California. It was just taking forever to get the supplies uh, distributed throughout the United States. And, you know, if you don't have the supply, if, the, if you don't have the appliances in the house, you can't get the COs to get them closed. The sixth thing they talked about is the congestion removes capacity from the system. So the more congestion you have, the harder it is to get that distribution out to all the different um, orders that are in their system. So if you think about it this way, from a traffic jam standpoint, we just had a traffic jam of all the supplies trying to get into the country to be able to make it flow so that we could actually get the product to the houses. And then the seventh thing they talk about is the bottlenecks. It's very difficult to see it from a, a very short distance. You have to get very far away and be able to view the whole picture, whether it's the block that isn't being delivered or the roof trusses or the windows or the flooring or the appliances, uh, maybe shingles or tile. Uh, it's, it's not easy to be able to predict what is going to be the bottleneck, where are the problems going to come from. And what happens, let's just say that you all of a sudden run out of uh, two by fours or you run out of roof presses. Well, the rest of the process can't continue until you get that particular bottleneck taken care of. So what do I think the solution is to this? Well, I think one thing is proper communication. And I think that's maybe where some of the builders have uh, fallen down a little short is proper communication with the clients. Um, I, I have a lot of clients that don't get any answers to the questions that they have about why aren't my roof trusses delivered when they said they were going to be, or why is the house that closed after mine is a lot further along than my house is. I think that the builders are not giving the proper communication to the uh, clients uh, that is deserved, even if they called them on a once a week or once every two week basis and say, look, I don't have any updates for you, at least if they were in communication with them. And, and, and I know that it's difficult for them to do this because they have a long list of um, things or checklists that they have to go through as well. But I still think that the communication is probably the uh, biggest issue that we're having right now for letting the clients know what step or what process their home is in. Well, I hope you got value out of this video. If you do, click that subscribe button, ding the little bell. Every time I put on a new video, you'll be notified. Mark Bamig, Michael Saunders and Company.